but I know uh, how this body works now, and I know its little idiosyncrasies, what I can do, what I can't do, but the, the most mistakes about people writing uh, with, about the porcelain and how it reacts, with, I found with is pulling handles. And pulling handles, uh, it, it depends on the way you're taught, but almost everyone that I read said, oh my God, you know, this porcelain doesn't pull a handle, you have to put it on and then cover it for four weeks, and I'm going, well, you know, these guys are just, you know, they're just approaching porcelain like they would stoneware, and that's, that's really the problem. Because stoneware has, has a lot of grit to it, on, on, for the most part, it's got a little more tooth. And so the way that, the old school way of attaching a, a handle to stoneware was to score it, and to put slip on it, and then either pull the handle and, you know, wet, and then stick it on wet, which was the way I was taught, which is horrible. I mean, I, I, I curse that way of teaching anymore. Um, and so when I got my school, I thought, well, I'm going to have to come up with a simple way for people to pull a handle, because it's the last thing everyone wants to do. And a handle, a pulled handle on a mug is very beautiful, and it makes, it's, 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 a, it's just such a nice statement, you know. Um, so I've come across this really simple way, and I realize now that porcelain is so fine that if you do take and score it, if you put a lot of deep marks on it and you stick something on that, with stoneware, the grain kind of attaches itself within itself. But porcelain, all those scratches, and you put something smooth on the scratches, what's behind it? Air. And the thing wants to crack off. So the best way to do it is to from number one, not to put slip on it, because slip is a total different uh, consistency than the two pieces you're attaching. I'm going to trim this real quick, and then I'll, I'll pull a handle, and then talk a little bit more about what that handle has to do with the clay. A handle, depends on how far it sticks out, will actually warp the piece. Uh, when it comes out of firing, that handle, the weight of the handle will actually oval that piece. So you have to be aware of that. When you're trimming a foot on this mug, you should realize that if you trim one that's way too narrow, it's going to be apt to fall over. But I, I really like the idea of a foot on a mug, it just makes it a little more elegant. Plus, it's not quite as hot as a flat bottom. You, can, you know, you see how people hold mugs. You ever watch women versus men, the way they hold cups? It's pretty interesting to me. Some people make cups for women different than they do men, and, and you know, men's hands are larger and their fingers are, I've got very fat fingers, so I'm aware of trying to stick my finger in some little tiny cup. And I usually just hold it. And anyone that makes a handle too big, people wind up just putting their whole hand in that handle and doing it like this instead of like that. A mug shouldn't be, you know, heavy, but it shouldn't be so light that it doesn't keep the, the liquid warm. You know, the only other, if you're extruding a handle, that has a purpose too. You know, an extruded handle over the top of a casserole or on the side, perfectly all right. An extruded handle or a cut handle over the top of a teapot, that's fine because you've got a start and a start almost instead of a start and a finish. And that comment that Hamada made a long time ago that it, it should appear to be a brush stroke, you know, makes sense because it starts off with a nice thick end there's new school and old school handles now. I've given workshops with younger potters, and they all think, you know, that's an old school handle. But it's fine. A handle's a handle. In the end, it's how it feels. I don't care if you attach the thick part on the bottom and whatever. It, uh, it may look good, but in the end, it's to be used. If it's just going to look good, then um, you won't sell to it. The way I throw these bottoms, they're round like a bowl on the inside. 
when I'm trimming it, so that trimming has to be exactly the same. The idea about a foot is very old. Um, you know, it started with a caveman holding a rock or something to hold something and eating out of it. And then it became uh, uh, burdensome to hold this thing, so they found something to set it in, which eventually became a foot. Because uh, in lifting this from a separate object was a drag too, so they said, why don't we just attach this object or find something that's already stuck to it. And so that's the idea of a foot, and it just evolved. But if you take this foot off, it should look just like a finished form. There shouldn't be. If you're going to throw a round bottom, you should never trim a flat bottom because you've got thick and really thin, and you're going to have cracks. So you can understand that, I hope. I always try to smooth this clay off. Um, it compresses a little bit. Not that it's going to crack out here, but it just looks a little nicer. Frank Boyden uh, pointed out in a couple of workshops a long time ago, and I never thought about it, that wood firing is a whole different thing. Wood firing and soda firing, the surface of that clay almost has to be polished so that it, it records that beautiful uh, ash and heat that's flowing by it. When something's really rough, it just goes by like a piece of cardboard. It kind of sticks in, in really funny areas. It doesn't have that beautiful transition. So I've always smoothed this clay off as smooth as I can get it, almost to the point of burnishing. It gets a little over the top. Somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, if I can find my tool, well, I'll just take this and kind of just scuff that surface. You're not, you're not scoring this, you're just kind of... So what it's doing is just taking that shine off the edge and making it kind of dull. You're not, not cutting into it at all. Roughing it up. The way I was taught to pull a handle was the worst I could have possibly imagined. It was great for stoneware, but to teach someone that way it was just, I think this guy just did it to me on, to make me suffer. Because he would pull a slug, he was a great handle puller for one thing. You'd pull this wet slug and then you'd cut it off and immediately take that wet slug in your hand and try to jam that on the piece, which just squished it all together and you had all these horrible marks on the piece. No one could learn. And then they started pulling and it would be thin at that spot and it would just pull off and it was, an, it was a nightmare. So I taught myself how to pull a handle. I never, I never really looked at anyone else when I started doing porcelain. And you know, you're not going to use much clay to pull a handle. You don't need you know, half as much as this. This would pull a handle that long. But you're going to roll it into a ball, tighten it up a little bit, and then just roll it into a, a carrot shape. And that's what you want to do. This, this already gives the student an idea that it starts thick and ends thin. So you have this brush stroke. Once you get it like that, a little thicker at the top and at the end, and slam it down a couple of times. And then take your needle and cut it off at an angle. A little bit like that. This is still way too much clay. Now, see, you can still handle this without worrying about screwing the doggone thing up. I'm going to push this to the outside a little bit. What you want is an oval. You never want something with a big tunnel drawn through it because by the time you put those two sharp edges against your knuckle to lift that up, it's going to hurt. So, an oval is the best thing without any marks in it at all. And drag marks. Uh, you can put, well, we'll talk about that. Just water, where I've, where I've dug into that clay a little bit, just fresh water, no slip at all. Okay? Let that water dry a little bit. You, you don't want to stick it on when it's just glossy. Just rub that into the surface. No water on this part at all. Just attach it. It 
this point, you can still do uh, just about anything you want with that handle without it being all juiced up. It'll stay up, it won't flop over on you. You can take and smooth this in. I've never had one of these come off when I do it this way. You may get a slight drying crack on the top, but you just take a rounded tool like this and just push it in after it's dry if it happens. Nine times out of 10, it won't. I prefer a wider handle at the top than most people because it feels better on my hand. Sometimes people don't like the looks of that. So now you're ready to start pulling. You've got it all attached well. Um, you know, that's very manual part of it. And then wet this down. This is the Japanese method and it's called uh, scissors. They had, I was taught two ways in Japan. I was taught the, the, uh, the it's like, what was it called? Pipe, the snake, it was a snake method because it was cobra. It was one thumb underneath, two fingers on the top, and you pulled it like that, and that gives you a really interesting handle, but not very comfortable. You really have to take your time with porcelain. If you start really dragging on it, it's just gonna pull off. So it's just a slide from the top, putting more pressure to the bottom. You constantly go, it's called scissors because you're going back like this with two fingers and you're going from each side, putting that clay in between the fat part of your thumb and forefinger and that smooths that edge off. And in between that, you're making a mark with your fingers like this up the side. So you get a thicker part in the center, which has your strength, but it's got that nice thin pulled area on the outside. So it's, it, it's a continuous pull. You should have a little softer clay maybe if you're having a hard time pulling that down. Like I said, that small amount of clay really pulls a long handle, much more than I'd need for this cup. This would be a two-fingered cup. Oops. You don't want it too thin because the public, when they see something thin like that, or think it's going to break off, although it's very strong. But thin enough to where it doesn't look like you put some big horseshoe on the side of it. Two or three more pulls. Okay. And then just turn it upside down, shake it a couple of times, and attach it here. This is one shape you can wind up with. I've got a lot of extra stuff, so I'm going to really kind of just push that in gently and tear that off in kind of a circle. It's got a little extra right there. There's many different ways to attach this bottom. You know, the old way was to actually curl the clay up to have this really, really that's really 60s stuff. <coughs> But it had a purpose. That little curl that was sticking off was a nice fulcrum to your fingers. Now that's just a straightforward handle, but I'm going to change that handle uh, to uh, more updated shape. Now it seems like I'm spending a long time on these, but I, I really don't make that many mugs and I enjoy pulling the handle. So I'm going to lift this up. Just get underneath it with my finger and lift it up which changes the whole shape of that handle. It almost squares it up. That's, that's a nicer shape for me, instead of just coming right off. It kind of has this straight up, so you can get your finger in, but it gives it a little length. And the Japanese have this idea that they want you to see how things work. They want you to see how things were attached, what's done to it. So even though they pull this really nice handle, they'll put a line, which I always did. I like, I like the idea of that, around this thing, around the whole handle, so it appears to be separate. And from the side, it's really a nice little shadow. And there's, there's two purposes for this. One is it actually makes it stronger. Um, because the glaze will fill in a little, a little bit there. And then you dry this area off. 
I'll put a stamp just to give it a little bit of character. And that really attaches it. So it's got just that little circular stamp. That's sort of my mark. Now, the secret is this porcelain so damn glassy that you're going to have to oval this. This is getting pretty hard. The opposite way. Just a little bit. But so you're ovaling it the opposite way of the handle. So when it comes out of the kiln, it'll be straight. Because it'll, it'll suck in that top just about that much. It's not much. But have you ever had something come out that was oval this way with a handle hanging out? It's not, not too attractive. Okay? So, you know, real simple, nice handle. And no, you don't have to cover this with plastic for four weeks. You set it right out. You know, the odd thing about Vegas is the faster things dry there because it's so hot and dry, they never crack. I mean, you, can, you can't set them out in the sun, but there's just no humidity. And I, I, when I get through pulling these handles, in fact, Pat Horsey and I used to work, he's a good potter friend of mine in Portland. At this stage, we put it in the kiln, this fire, because it's better, if you're gonna blow up something in the bisque, it always blows up because it's dry. Not all the way dry, but there's a skin on the outside and, and the steam, when you're bisking, can't escape, so it blows. Same with the handle. It, you know, a, a convec convection oven is the idea. If you're gonna bisque fire wet, which a lot of people do, they'll put a, a fan to circulate that heat. It's a very slow dry. It's the way they dry commercial bricks.